Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. So in this tutorial it's going to be about the pick up multiple pistols or any object that you want to carry. So here I have one, two, three pistols. Each one of them has uh, a sphere, which when the character overlaps it, the character is going to be able to pick up the pistol. So when I press F, you're going to be able to pick up. And for dropping, you can press F again, and it's going to drop the pistol. And if I want to come to the, this pistol here, it's going to work. So this one here, like this. And so this code is going to allow us to pick up, oh, my, <laughs> my pistol is glitching there. That's because of the physics asset, I don't need to worry about this. But uh, as soon as, yeah, <laughs> the pistol just disappeared. But uh, as soon as we overlap this box collision, this fierce collision, sorry, we can, uh, we are able to pick up the nearest pistol that is near the character, okay? So let's go for it. So it doesn't matter if I just come down here and duplicate this, duplicate this, and I press play here. Uh, I can, I'm able to pick up this pistol here, F, or I'm able to pick up this one, this one, this one. So as you can see on the top left corner, I get a string value, which is red for me kind of pink, but uh, as you can see here, it prints out all the values. As you can see there, it's called distance values found. And as you can see, it's printing up a lot of values. Uh, so it's going to get all the existing pistols in the world and get the distance of them relative to the character. And it's going to save that indexed and it's going to allow the character to pick up that specific pistol that is near. There is the, the nearest pistol uh, relative to the character's location. So the character, so at the end of the tutorial, you're going to be able to pick up uh, any pistol that you can basically just copy and duplicate it like this. Easy like that. So you're going to be able to make your character to be able to pick up multiple different pistols. Uh, and Zelda is going to be able to pick up the nearest pistol, pistol uh, from relative to the character's location. Um, so let's go to, to the third person character here. And I think here is pick up drop pistol. And I'm not going to do this as I do the normal tutorials. Uh, before I used to right click and do all the things, all the implementations from scratch. But in this tutorial, as, it, as this tutorial is like for a little bit more advanced, as this is a more a little more advanced for people who already work with character locomotion and uh, blueprint interactions, I think we're going to do this a little bit different from now. Uh, only for this tutorial. So here what happens when I press F. So I just want to basically explain what I did instead of uh, doing everything from scratch, which is going to take a lot of time. So when I press F here, I'm going to choose a key. So F key. So you're going to get the, the F key event. I'm going to create a Boolean called can pick up pistol and create another one for checking if the character is holding a pistol. So I'm going to get a branch, and if the character can pick up the pistol, it's going to go to, if the character cannot pick up, the, well, actually this variable here, the only way that it can get changed is inside the pistol blueprint. So let's go ahead and browse to the asset. Let's start off by browsing to where my pistol is, right? So here I have my, so here I have my, Skeletal Mesh, 
Uh, if I double click on that, here we go. Here it is. It's very nice. Um, so what you're going to do, you're going to just basically right click, go to asset actions, create a blueprint using this. So uh, once you've created that blueprint, it's going to be like this. If you go to the viewport, uh, we're going to see it like this, skeletal mesh. So here you can add a sphere collision. So you can go to sphere, go to add sphere, sorry, sphere collision. So you're going to choose this one and you're going to scale it. And uh, this is going to be the, the location of where the character is going to be able to uh, pick up the pistol. So as soon as he overlaps this sphere here, he's going to be able to pick up the pistol that is overlapping. Um, and scrolling down here, as you can see, I have added with the plus sign here on events. So you're going to add down component begin overlap and end overlap. So let's go ahead and view it. So the first thing you're going to do this in this pistol blueprint here is going to get the actor of a class. So you're going to select the name of your current character name as mine is BP third person character player. So you're going to get the actor and save the reference. So uh, by saving the reference, once the character overlaps this box collision here, the character is going to be able to pick up the pistol, right? Um, so we can change the can pick up pistol that we have created right here. So we're going to be able to change this variable based if the character just overlapped the sphere trace or not. So as soon as the character begin overlap, we're going to set that variable that is inside here of our character's blueprint to be true. And we're going to print a string just to say if the character just overlapped the box collision, the sphere collision or not. And if it is false, uh, I think this false is not going to be executed, but you can, you can do it like this if you want to, but it's not necessary. Do it like this. If it's false, then disable this variable here. Um, so here on component end overlap, so it does what it says. It sets the, it's going to set the character ability to pick up the pistol. So once it's true, that means that the character ends and the overlap of the sphere trace. That means that the character just step out of it. And we're going to set, if it's true, then we're going to set the can pick up pistol to off. So we're not going to be able to pick up the pistol anymore. So going back to the third person character here, if the character can pick up the pistol, that means that the character just overlapped the sphere trace, then we can be able to pick up the pistol. Uh, it's going to go to another branch and it's going to check if the character is already holding the pistol, right? Of course, this variable is going to be true because it's going to be the first time that we're going to we're going to hold a pistol. So it's going to, of course, be false. And after we go to false, it's going to go to a sequence, which is going to execute multiple codes here. So I'm going to go uh, through them later. Here on the get the reference, we're going to get the all the actors of a class of that BPSW39. <laughs> of the pistol reference. So we're going to type here BP W39. And so we're going to choose this one. Don't worry about the child. I'm going to explain you later how it's going to work. So I'm going to do once because I want to get the, the reference only once, right? I'm, I don't want to get the reference every time. Uh, and here, and here I'm going to promote out actors to a variable and this variable is an array an array type a variable type of array means that we can store multiple references in one array so we can store a lot of references in one variable right uh, so as we have more than one pistol then we, we need a, an array right so here we have a pistol actors and after then zero is completed, as after we get the reference, then it is going to go to then one, which is going to grab 
here I have, I have added the comment, which is to check the distance of all actors relative to the player and also get the nearest distance value relative to the character. It's the same, it's the same thing, relative to the player, relative to the character, same thing. So let's suppose you have two pistols here. So on this for each loop here, out of the loop body is going to execute whatever comes after this is going to execute two times. I think that's how it works, I don't know. But I think that's how I, I understand. Uh, if I have, if I would add more here, for example, three or four, then on this loop body is going to execute four times because I have four pistols on uh, a pistols because I have four pistol references on one array here, on one variable. Uh, right. So it's going to depend on how many references you have. So it's going to execute this. Uh, so the times that it's going to take for it to be executed, yeah, you understood. And we're going to compare the distance. So we're going to say, oh, what's the distance of between this actor and the other actor? So we're going to print out a value. So here on the return value on the output, we're going to print out what is the distance relative to that one pistol to the character. And now you might be asking, oh, how are we going to get all the information? Uh, where are we going to store all these informations of uh, distance of where the character is at relative to where the pistol is at? Uh, I'm going to try to do a simple drawing here. So let's say we have our character here. So we have our character here. So as soon as we execute the get to all actors of a class, uh, we're going to reference all the pistol references in here. We're going to execute, uh, sorry, we're going to store all the pistol references inside this array here. So we're going to get this pistol reference, this pistol reference, this one, and this one. So it's going to store four pistol references inside this array here. Uh, if I were to run a for each loop here, so we're going to take all these four uh, pistol references here and on this execution pin here, whatever we execute is going to run four times. So what I've done here, I want to print a string and I want to get each reference and I want to print out the distance relative to the character and all the other uh, uh, pistol references, right? So I guess you understood. So we're going to uh, put the array element here, which is the pistol to be referenced. Wait, sorry, which is the pistol to be referenced. And we're going to print out. So I'll, as soon as I press play here, I want to quickly go over this. I think I've, I am missing four. I am missing two of them. I press play. And as soon as I press F, nothing happens because I'm not near a pistol. So when I'm near, press F. And as you can see, there are distance values found and you're going to be able to see uh, <laughs> which pistol is near the character. Right? Uh, so it's going to get that distance and it's going to calculate what's the nearest pistol. So we're going to save the distance and we're going to add all the informations of the uh, distances between the actor, between the character uh, from the pistol, from all the pistol references. So what we're going to do here, we're going to store distant values between all the existing pistols in the world and print the lowest distance value relative to the character and its respective index. So to get the respective index was a challenge for me because I I didn't know about this node here called minimum of a float array. So this is going to basically get the lowest value between an array. As we are getting the distance the distance relative to the character from all the existing pistols in the world, 
So this is going to contain four arrays of different values. And we need to get the lowest value and its respective index. So its respective index is going to represent which exactly weapon we are trying to get the reference of. So here we add the array and we set the delay duration because we need to give it a little bit of time for it to be executed, right? For this function to be executed. So as soon as we get the nearest object, the minimum, the lowest value of the uh, array, and we're going to know what's the index of the, the value, its respective index, and we're going to print out the nearest distance. So I choose the text color to be green. So let's show it on practice. Uh, when I get near a pistol here, when I press F. And as you can see, the nearest distance is 37. So that means that the, the character could be able to pick up the nearest pistol. And uh, all because of the respect of index and also because of the minimal value here. So I'm going to print out the value to get the nearest distance of the, the pistol. And we're going to print out the respective index as red. So when I press play, why am I spawning just two weapons? I have four. <laughs> I have all the four pistols here. And when I press F, as you can see, it, it prints out a zero. And if I drop it again, and I press it again, it says zero. So the respective index is basically a specific ID that there has to exist. So without the respective index, we want to be able to find out which exactly weapon we are trying to reference, right? So I'm going to drop this one here. Remember this one was zero. Now I'm trying to get near this one, I press F. And as you can see, it's one. And I come to this one right here. I press F, as you can see, it's two. And this one is three, two, three, two. So the respective index does not change at all. If you want to basically have multiple pistols in your game, you can create a child, which is going to contain all the variables and all the information that the, the parent has. So if you come down here on the BPSW39, if that's the case of your, uh, if that's the blueprint of your pistol, then you can just right click on it and create a child blueprint class. So we're going to be allowing you to create variable variants easily. So you can easily change if the if you want this pistol to be maybe with a different type of damage, so on. You can actually create a child blueprint class, and here is the child. So you can just basically drag and drop uh, all of them into the world. So if you have already drop, drag and drop the your current your parent blueprint class here, so you can just delete it. So you basically don't need that. Uh, all you need is just a child, so you can just drag and drop. As you can see here, I have all the child. Childs. Uh, we're going to compile, save everything. So this is just beginning. Yeah, we have a lot of more stuff to explain. So here we're going to create the references of the nearest objects because we want to reuse the array. So we're going to clean it. And we're going to call the event to attach the pistol, right? So all that it's doing here is just going to check the distance of all, of all actors and it's going to get the lower value and it's going to get the nearest actor of the... So it's got, we're going to store the respective index, which is pretty important. Print out the values and then we can finally call the event. So let's double click on this and here we have it. So we're going to create a custom event by just right click and then add custom event. And here, as we have the respective index and uh, all the, the array variables that we need, now we're going to attach the nearest pistol to the character. Uh, 
So we're going to do once. Oh. Yeah, we're going to run is valid. We're going to reset it to once by releasing the F key. If the F key is the one key that you use for picking up the pistols, uh, you can use the release that. Uh, you can drag off from release to reset. We're going to get the is valid. If you don't execute this, your game might crash. So it's always good to execute the is valid. And we're going to set the simulate physics of the pistol to off because we are attaching, right? Uh, pistol actors. We're going to drag and drop the pistol actors that we have referenced there. And we're going to get, so we're going to drag off this and get a copy, right? And we're going to get the respective index to be here, like this. So with the respective index, we can attach the, we can set all this uh, is valid, set simulate physics, and we can attach the actor to the component. So here I have chosen a socket name. Uh, if you don't know how to create a socket name, we're gonna go to the mesh, double click on the skeletal mesh, and double click on the, on and click here on the skeleton. And here is the skeleton of the mannequin. So you can search for the hand R or whatever hand we want you to be able to make a character to be holding the pistol. Here on the hand R pistol, as you can see, I have added, this is my socket for attaching the pistol. So for adding a socket, you can just right click, add socket, and then you can add whatever socket you want, whatever socket name you want. So we're going to basically right click again, add preview asset, and then you're going to choose which asset you want to use. Maybe you want to use this one here. So there you go. <laughs> uh, there you go. Okay, this is a mess. What have I done? All right, let's save and let's go back to the third person character. And here we're going to create one more. I think we have already created what this variable here on the beginning. So it's called is holding pistol. And we're going to check, we're going to set this is holding pistol to be on, to be checked on. Uh, with this code, we're going to be able to pick up our the nearest pistol. And but what if you want to detach the, the pistol from our hands? So if I press F again, then the character can be able to drop the pistol, simulating the physics. Uh, we can, on this can pick up pistol, out of false. Uh, well, as our character is holding the pistol, we press play here. If our character is holding the pistol, as you can see, the sphere is actually is still overlapping the character. That's going to be helpful for us because we need to know if the character is holding the past the, the pistol or not. Is if the character can uh, pick up the pistol, then if the character can pick up the pistol, it's going to be true, which is going to go to another branch. And we're going to check if the character is already holding the pistol, which is going to be true because we're already holding. And we're going to execute the detach pistol. So we're going to call the event that I've created here. So we're going to right click and add a custom event here again. And you're going to name it whatever you want. I named mine to be detach pistol. So now we're going to get the is holding pistol that we've created. We're going to check if the character is holding the pistol. Then if the character is already holding the pistol, we are going to get the respective index and all that stuff. The same thing that we do here. Well, uh, we're going to basically copy all, all this to here. And we are going to detach from actor. And the target is going to be our pistol, the reference of our pistol. And we are going to set the hold is holding pistol variable to off. I think that's going to be all of it. And I do false just in case uh, there are some glitches. 
So I connect false to detach pistol. And you don't need to worry about this because it's just an implementation from a other code. So I think that's going to be it. So what's basically doing here, uh, once we overlap the sphere trace, this variable is going to be turned to be true, right? And if this value is true, then it's going to pass to this bridge here, and it's going to check if the character is holding the pistol or not. Then if the character is not holding the pistol, we're going to do once. Uh, so we're going to be able to execute this code only once. We're not going to be able to execute anymore because you only need to get all actors of a class only once because you're not going to be spawning any new pistol to the world, right? We're not going to be spawning any other pistol in the world. Uh, we're going to then one here. We're going to check the distance, get the nearest distance and its respective index, its respective identity. Uh, we're going to clear the references so we can uh, attach more values to the array. So we can reset the values to the array. We're going to attach. This is the attach event. And it's going to attach actor to the component to the respective socket name. So yeah, I think I've gone through everything. So I think that's going to be it for the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, comment down below. You can join our Discord server for more explanations about nodes and so on. That's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed and I see you in the next one. Bye bye.